Hello, welcome once again on my scientific blog Discover Social Sciences. In this video I continue a path of teaching, a path of educational materials in the general or under the general title of urban economics and city management. Here I will um, focus a little bit on the concept of cities as demographic anomalies and I will make by the same occasion like a deep dive into the philosophy of science. If you follow my channel on YouTube and if you follow, and if you follow my blog at discoversocialsciences.com you can discover that uh, I have published recently on YouTube a video devoted precisely to the theory of truth in the philosophy of science. I used those three approaches, one based on the probabilistic theory of truth as derived from the writings of Pierre Simon, Marquis de Laplace. The second one is the hermeneutic or, herme or hermeneutical theory of truth as based on the writings of a German philosopher Hans Georg Gadamer. And finally, there is the theory of truth based on quite modern research, which is labeled together as the interface theory of perception. And here I will combine my line of research on cities and on urban economics with the line of research on the philosophy of science. So I will go to the presentation which I prepared in PowerPoint for this occasion. So urban economics and city management part three, demographic anomalies. Yes, there are two videos already published in that path of uh, urban economics and city management. So I outline the problem. Here you can see a map of my home country, Poland, uh, with that little chunk of the surrounding Central European countries. And now what does this map represent? This map is sourced or has been sourced from maps, or from online maps available with the Center for International Earth Science Information Network at the Columbia University. Here you have, uh, in the title of the slide, you have the link. It is ciesin.org or C-I-E-S-I-N.org. Uh, it is essentially Earth seen from the orbit. Those maps uh, available with CSIN uh, are based on satellite imagery and the orange agglomerations uh, in the map are agglomerations of, of human settlements. The methodology used at the Columbia University is to identify human settlements as concentrations of, first of all, man-made structures like buildings and roads, and this is observable in daylight, and in the night, it is a concentration of nighttime lights produced by those man-made structures. And uh, you can see here the produce, the final, the final result of that methodology of analyzing and uh, reformatting uh, satellite pictures. Now, if you look at it, if you have a little bit of knowledge about Central Europe, about the, the essential geography of Central Europe, this chunk of land, so my home country, Poland, as it is here, as you can see, it's surrounded by the pointer of the mouse. It is all, let's say, it is easy land. It is either a plain, or if it is a highland, it is a fertile, easily accessible highland. Just in the very south, we have some mountains. But those mountains are not very high. A large part of them is available for agriculture. So this land has no like physical adversities. In Poland, there are no deserts. There are no very high, like wild, 
uh, uncivilized mountains. Even most forests that we have in Poland are forests made by humans. Huh? We almost don't have those like those primal forests inherited from the depths of our history. And yet in that easy land, easily accessible for agriculture, easily accessible for construction, you can see that we humans in Poland, we agglomerate in those orange dots, in those orange agglomerations. We don't spread evenly. We spread very unevenly. We produce those agglomerations. That's the, the essential concept behind the claim that cities are demographic anomalies. Now, just in case you thought that Poland is somehow unique, this is France. This is France mapped according to the same methodology and this map is sourced from Columbia University as well. Once again, save for this part, so save for let's say the southeastern France, all the rest is easily accessible land. It's fertile, it's flat or just slightly elevated and technically humans could have historically spread evenly across that available space. Yet, humans didn't. Humans agglomerated in those orange dots, in those orange patches you can see on the map. So this is like a recurrent pattern in human settlements. We like agglomerating, we like creating those demographic anomalies which are cities. So when we humans, when we settle somewhere, we seem to be collectively intelligent about partitioning our habitable space between dense agglomerations, which we call cities, on the one hand, and sparsely inhabited countryside, which is essentially a food base. Now, this property of human settlements is the base of distinguishing in official statistics between the total surface of urban land and the total surface of agricultural land, plus the land which is essentially wildlife, so which is neither urban nor agricultural, just left for wild animals. And the question is, what does the theory of truth has to do with anything in that context? Well. The thing is the following, if I take the data from Columbia University, so if I take a map of France or a map of Poland, first of all, there is a discrepancy between the officially administratively declared surface of cities on the one hand and the total surface of urban land as measured with those satellite pictures according to the methodology of Columbia University. In the case of France and Poland, the official administrative size or the official administrative total surface of urban land is greater than that based on satellite imagery. So we have like two different takes on what essentially is a city. Is a city what, uh, is a city what it claims to be? Or, so, or is the surface of a city what the citizens of that city claim it is? Or should we rather believe those satellite pictures? And here we enter into the philosophy of science and into the theory of truth. I refer here to the three essential theories of truth I have already touched upon in my previous videos. So there is the probabilistic theory of truth here marked as answer number one. So when I ask what is true, my first answer can be that we find the truth in the greatest possible probability of the relevant phenomena happening. And it is sourced from the writings of Pierre Simon, Marquis de Laplace. Secondly, I can give uh, the answer that truth is to find in the aesthetic experience of beauty and in the connection with our historically grounded culture. So that's the hermeneutical answer. 
sourced in the writings of the German philosopher Hans Georg Gadamer. And finally, there is the third truth. Truth is the most functional representation of reality as regards one's capacity to maximize rewards from the environment. Now, if I return to my maps, to Poland, for example, when I want to sort out what is the true surface of urban land in Poland, that declared by local authorities as the surface of their cities and towns, or, on the other hand, that measured by or with the methodology of Columbia University. The first thing is probabilistic, or the first answer is probabilistic. If I take any new human being coming to society, so any new child being born, what is the likelihood of that child being born in the countryside and what is the likelihood of, that, of the child being born in a city? Those two probabilities are informative about the, the relative concentration or the relative appartenance of people to urban land and agricultural land. On the other hand, I can say that the city is what I like seeing as a city and what I historically consider as a city. That's the, hermeneutic, the hermeneutical answer to the question, what is a city and what is the true surface of urban land? The true surface of urban land is the surface of the land which I both claim to be urban based on the historically culturally rooted experience and which like, through my aesthetic experience is a city, is my town. And finally there comes the functional theory of truth, the one based on the interface theory of perception. And when I ask what is the true surface of a city, the answer is the true surface of a city is the surface that when considered as urban and managed and uh, uh, governed as urban, gives us as a community the greatest possible rewards. So these three theories of truth can be applied to sorting out what is urban and what is agricultural or, or, or wildlife. Here I want to straight out uh, four common misconceptions about truth and the theory of truth in connection with that all reflection about cities and cities as a demographic anomaly. So the first misconception is truth is self-explanatory and self-evident. So in this case it would, it would be saying that a demographic anomaly or city as a demographic anomaly is really an anomaly when it is self-explanatory and self-evident, when I don't have to look for any additional proof. No, this is false. If we don't even try to explain or verify a claim, so if we take sim uh, simply for granted, you see, it is just an alleviation, a reduction of our cognitive dissonance. We just give ourselves comfort, emotional comfort, by assuming that something is self-explanatory and self-evident. But it is our choice, based on our cognitive limitations, and this is not an inherent property of the phenomena that we observe. If we just think that this is a city and it doesn't need any explanation, it just means that our brain doesn't want to look for explanation. Now, uh, the second misconception is that beauty has nothing to do with truth. It is false, especially as it regards the civilizational role of cities. Generally, the aesthetic experience, so the distinction between beauty and ugliness, and the, the distinction between different like grades of beauty, it is a deep human experience, one of the deepest ones. We don't even quite understand how it is linked to the functional payoffs we can have from the environment, yet there is something underneath it. Many scientific theories are labeled as beautiful. And you can see it. There are many cities where, for example, you start in a place 
You start, for example, in the city center. The latest uh, example that I can think of is Nice in France on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. When you are in the city center, in the old town, and you start like walking around, you say, oh, this is a nice city. But as soon as you get out of the city center, so if you go north over and beyond the railway tracks, you suddenly find a very different type of urban terrain. You hesitate, like, is it the, really the same city? Is it really still Nice? Or is it another entity? Is it like real urban structure? Or is it just something attached to the properly spoken urban structure? So this uh, rooting of truth in the aesthetic experience and in the historically gr grounded culture has like long roots. It, it, it makes sense. Now, truth is different from opportunistic payoff, another misconception. It can be, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't ne necessarily. I mean, we are behind being conscious entities, we are living organisms and we all we all struggle for survival. If you just want to see how brutal and unforgiving is the environment that we live in, just cut yourself from electricity and current water for two weeks and you will immediately see how uh, hard it is to survive and how much survival capacity we gain by being in a city. So you could say that what is truly a city, what is truly an urban land, is the type of structure which gives us that specific opportunistic payoff, that security, uh, that safety from harm. And finally, the fourth misconception, we cannot and do not estimate probability and the intuitive level. Once again, it is false. Probability is far more than just a mathematical calculus. Probability is deep in our brain. We instinctively register in our brain the frequency at which distinct phenomena happen. And what we consider as the structure of our reality, of the observable reality, is simply a collection of phenomena which happen the most recurrently, with the highest probability and the lowest uncertainty. This is the skeleton of our reality. And on that skeleton we progressively build up layers of uncertainty and lower probability. Okay, so this was an example of applying the theory of truth or, or the theories of truth to the concept of cities as demographic anomalies. That would be all in this video. I invite you to visit my blog at discoversocialsciences.com and as usually I wish you to have fun with life and to have fun with science. Bye!